guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a juicy video. Are you ready? It is going to be 14 questions you're embarrassed to ask about prenup. Did I say it right? No. The title is, <laughs> why won't my phone adjust? Hold on. I... 14 questions. 14, 14. Um, 14 Gary, what's <clears throat> embarrassed you were, to ask? You, why are you guys so embarrassed to ask these questions? These are good questions. Anyways, I did a story on my Instagram and I asked to really spill the tea when it comes to anything you want to know information wise. This is a kind of like a taboo subject and I find that it's time to kind of unload it and unpack it a little bit and just talk about it openly because I feel like there's this stigma around it. So let's talk about it openly, but I want to talk about what inspired this video and the reason we're making it. Valeria included me in a recent reel on Instagram that is almost the 20 million views it went nuts this video and it was one of these videos where you do the so I didn't even know what the questions were Valeria just told me to do the little I told stuff. you the questions you, you did it. these are questions that I get asked all the time and I just found that there's no reason to take them seriously anymore so I really wanted to create something really funny about it and it was amazing to see how people react to it it was a true like society study for me to just see how people consume that kind of information and what they have to say one of the questions was if we have a prenup like Gary mentioned so I really wanted to dive into the subject because we actually do have a prenup and I thought that because it's such a taboo subject we need to start talking about it more. So I want to ask the first question. What is a prenup? So a, a prenup is a marriage contract. I mean, essentially it's a marriage contract that you can put anything you want in there. I mean, there are certain templated options, but for the most part, you can put anything, you know, anything to do with your finances. You can even talk about how you want to raise your future children. So it's a marriage contract. It's a contract just like any other contract, like a, like a shareholder's agreement in a business. It's a contract to really define the terms of the marriage if you stay together and more so what happens if you do break up. Yes, the second question was do we have a prenup? We do have a prenup, hello. When Gary proposed I was 20 years old, I was a baby. And I, as much as most of us that have been watching movies and kind of consumed their information about how marriage is supposed to work from Hollywood, prenup doesn't necessarily have like a good association to it. A lot of the movies that I remember watching, it was always like marriages will break through or like the weddings that will never- Break through? Not break through, how do you call it? Break uh, up? Break up, yes. When we got engaged, Gary was a little scared. I remember no, the conversation. Stop, you scared. were, you were uncomfortable. Uncomfortable with what? To talk about prenup. No, I don't remember ever being Because you didn't Want, because you didn't want to offend me and I think that was kind of the main you know no. I sorry I just disagree that's not the memory I have of it I think I was what memory was yours my memory was to me I'm I didn't, so happy you're doing this video I wasn't I wasn't anxious at all about presenting no, you with anxious. this I wasn't worried about it and I wasn't worried what you would say about it and the reason I wasn't worried about it is because you were you were and you are a very logical person and you you accepted that conversation or you responded to the conversation regarding a prenup the way I expected you to respond and you were totally cool with it and you understood that it's the correct thing to do you know right. years ago my father once told me he said something to me that always rang true and you know I, I, I carry it with me and, and most things that I do is he said that the best way to achieve peace is to prepare for war and what he meant by that is in any Your father said that? My father said that. And what that means is that to create an agreement or a document or an understanding between two people entering into something as important as a marriage, to create a document that really explains the what ifs, what will happen if. And the great thing about a prenup, and you know, this will be controversial. I know people will say, sure, he's saying it, you know, prenups are great, but they really are because they make your marriage happier. Because what happens is when both parties know what will happen in the case of a breakdown, the actual marriage itself is much better because there's no weird tension between partners as to what would potentially happen. So on my end, I thought that because I am a very logical person, mm -hmm. I thought that it was a very normal thing, like you mentioned, to prepare and to kind of have an understanding of what it is is going on. It's no secret that obviously at 20 years old, I didn't have much to my name and Gary is already, has already made I a was, certain- I was 38 years old. Right, so you already lived life and you know, you had your accomplishment. For me, I didn't look at it as like, oh, he's 
trying to protect his money and his is his and I have nothing. It was more for me to also have a better understanding of what I'm getting myself into. So I went and got an independent legal advice and I made sure that what's in the contract, it will serve us both, you know what I mean? Because you, don't, you never know what's gonna happen. People look at it in a very simplistic way. Whoever is the most successful person at that moment is the breadwinner. They're looking at it as, oh, they're trying not to include me in whatever it is that we're sharing. And I just think that once you go and actually get a professional legal advice, you understand how you are better taken care of in case of different scenarios. Something that's important to talk about when it comes to prenups is expectations. A prenup doesn't mean that if you're married and things don't work out, that you're basically left with nothing and you're in the street. So that's just not the case. And you know, it's actually interesting because I've had people come to me when they were negotiating their, their marriage contracts with their partners. And I remember telling people that I know, if you think that you're going to get married and spend any kind of meaningful time with somebody or have children with somebody and that person, and if the marriage doesn't work out, that person will leave the marriage with nothing, don't get married. Because I don't think you understand what marriage is about. It's mm -hmm. unrealistic and it's just quite frankly, completely unfair for one partner, but it doesn't matter, men, women, you know, the person with more money or less money, it's not fair for someone to be in a marriage and leave with nothing. I always think about like the children, right? You always wanna make sure that there's stuff in place to make sure that the kids are protected from all the nonsense and the fights and all that stuff that happens when there's no clarity around things like finances and you know, when the house gets split up, what gets what. I think not having a prenup is the equivalent of starting a business with somebody and not having a shareholders agreement. I just don't, right. I just don't think it's the correct thing to do. Again, this negative connotation that is associated with prenups and a lot of it is fueled by pop culture by Kanye West in one of his songs saying <laughs> It's not this evil thing. It's again, it's a document but to manage. I'm it. sure Kim Kardashian is very happy that she got a prenup <clears throat> with Kanye. I don't know if she got a prenup. I'm not. She did. I, I wasn't. And she's the... very happy about it. I weren't you offended by the prenup? I wasn't offended by the prenup because I went and got my own independent legal advice and I understood <clears throat> the type of clause and the type of terms that I was requesting and I just felt like it was protecting me. It wasn't all just around like the money aspect, it was so many different things. I wanted to make sure that when we're going to have children, like everything is taken care of and I just wanted to avoid as much nonsense, if God forbid, you know, we split up as possible. So when I initially went to the lawyers, the lawyer said, that's fine, like, we'll put the prenup together. They asked about things like assets and you know, net worth and overall financial information. And basically what happened was the lawyers told me that Valeria needs to get what's called ILA, and that's independent legal advice. So we actually got another lawyer who was representing Valeria, and then those lawyers started communicating with each other. But yeah, it's really important that you do have that independent legal advice. I remember when you had that meeting, after you got back from that meeting, you were a little upset. You questioned me about like certain clauses and I remember having to explain myself to you. It was a very brief moment of tension that I felt we had over like regarding the whole prenup situation. I was very clear with our lawyer that I'm not looking for a scenario that's unfair. So I want this thing to be amicable. I want it to be fair. I don't want to be in a scenario where we're married for however many years and then she has nothing. That's just unfair. And in general, in any contract that I put together and any agreement that I enter, I'm always looking for equality because once you have a, when you have equality and both sides feel that they're represented well and that it's a fair agreement, that's when the relationship is the happiest. That's when it's it's best for business when you're in when you know when you have partners and you have a shareholders agreement that's fair to all parties, and when you're in a marriage. And for us, the fact that we know that our prenup, we both feel it's fair. It makes us happier overall because we feel like it's an equitable marriage, it's, it's equal. I also feel like from my experience coming from a generation that they knew nothing about it, I mean our parents, prenups, what are you talking about? They didn't even think about it. My parents are divorced, Gary's parents are divorced and I think that also just seeing how that played out also showed us that having a contract is very necessary. Compare the advantages, disadvantages of a marriage without a prenup. I mean, on my end, I don't really understand the advantages. I feel like the advantages are maybe just like ego-based where you 
just think like, oh, we're so in love that we don't need a prenup, but I feel like it's a very simplistic and a bit of a romanticized look on marriage because you know what marriage, you do go through ups and downs, you go through a lot of things in life together and I truly look at it as a partnership and I agree with Gary that I just think that there's always needs to be something in place that you can understand the expectations and the results and understanding where you stand. So I actually don't see any advantages for not getting a prenup and then the disadvantages I feel like are pretty obvious. In most countries or states or you know wherever, anything that a couple has before the marriage, all of that even let's say 10 years into a marriage, that all stays with you. The split between assets is what you make together. The increase in your wealth for after you get married. The only exception to that is the matrimonial home. So if let's say I owned a home that we moved into and that home was worth let's say a million dollars and it was paid for with money that I had made prior to getting married and then we split up, then that home would be split. So the only thing that you split from before you get married- That home wouldn't be split. That home would be split. If you as a married couple or as a family live in a home, regardless of who paid for that home with Mm -hmm. money that was earned before the marriage, everything else is divided 50-50. However, let's say somebody enters a marriage and they're worth $100 million and then the partner is coming in and that partner is worth $10 million as an example. The appreciation of that combined $110 million over a 10 year period, most of it will come from the $100 million. So when you have situations like that, you need to try to offset that a little because it is unfair to the partner who's coming in with the mm-hmm. larger amount of money. I mean. We're getting really technical about You're it. You're getting very technical. No, I know, but I think I think it's important that p- for people to know that there are certain protections already just by law without right, a prenup right. that already exist. And you're really protecting yourselves from, yeah, no, I guess it doesn't make sense. No, to it's a lot of, yeah. Do you think everyone should create a prenup before marriage? Yeah. I would I, recommend, I, yes, I would recommend yes. I don't see why you wouldn't. Why is it important to have a prenup? It's important to have a prenup because it, it outlines expectations and it should give both partners peace of mind as to what will happen in the case the marriage breaks down. I've talked to partners who've had more than the person that they're marrying and they have this expectation that if the marriage doesn't work out that the other side will get nothing. It's just an incorrect assumption and then you know people who think that shouldn't get married. How do you approach the conversation of prenups without hurting offending your partner? I think that you need to start by changing the narrative around what prenup is. I think that that's kind of what I think it's so important for us to make this video because again there's this just very simplistic look of what prenup is and it's just not that so i feel like just maybe letting your partner kind of learn a little bit more maybe see a lawyer that can explain a little bit more about how they actually can get protected and it has nothing to do with your love it's nothing to do with your devotion to each other it has nothing to do with anything this is very much of just like a basic thing to have that you can just start your marriage and a good place and I would highly recommend to again change the narrative around it and don't let your ego play a role in it because I feel like a lot of us especially women maybe men as well now look at it as kind of a sign that you know this is not this is not the kind of love or this is like unromantic thing to do I'm gonna make a controversial statement if you propose to your partner that you want a prenup and if their response is negative and emotional, I don't think that person's ready to get married. I don't think that person is mature enough to get married because the things that you'll have to deal with as a couple afterwards, a prenup is gonna seem like a walk in the park. I think that's a big statement to make. I think that it's just one of those things where we've been taught something for so long and we think about it in such a specific way that it's time to unlearn certain things and actually educate yourself about about what it means. So I think it's more kind of like a push to get more information, educate yourself, learn what it is before reacting or letting it ruin like a good relationship. You know what I mean? Next one, where there is real love involved, do you think a prenup is necessary? Kind of goes back to what I just said, so. Yes, especially if there's real love involved, you need a prenup. Absolutely, you need to protect that love. I just think that love and a prenup has nothing to do with the other. I think it has everything to do with it.
So it's because you love me and therefore you trusted me that you were cool with it. So it has everything to do with it. Sorry, I had to say, because you let, okay, I had to let it out. It's like, was sitting right here. Okay, yeah, I guess, yeah, it's true. You know what, I just feel like there's too many stories, unfortunately, of people that they were extremely in love and everything was wonderful. And then 10 years, 20 years down the line, things happen, people change, you know, and all of a sudden, you start seeing a character of this person that you were like in uh, love with comes out and all of a sudden you understand that they don't really think about you so i think that real love is great but a contract is very great you know it's it's interesting because people think that prenups are this negative thing but i've known of scenarios because there was no prenup the partner who came in with more money was able to settle with the partner with less money for far less than that person would have gotten mm -hmm. if they would have had a prenup. The popular belief is that a prenup puts the person coming into the marriage with less money at a disadvantage. That's incorrect. A properly drafted and agreed upon prenup will actually protect the partner coming in with less money even more so so it really is a document that does protect both sides should you get a prenup even if you don't own anything yet actually protect with less money even uh, i feel like i would say yes again i'm not a lawyer but when you go into a marriage when there's financial equality between two people Either they both have nothing or they both have very close, you know, uh, personal net worths. Even having a marriage contract that just even mimics general law, even that's a good idea to really get things out in the open so both parties understand what happens in the case the marriage breaks down. So yeah, I think it's I also idea. think it's such a great exercise to do before you get married, even if you don't own anything, because I think that then you see how you and your partner communicate on things that are not as like romance that just got the start of every relationship. I think that these are like real issues. You wanna make sure that you can openly talk about, be sincere with each other and know how to deal with as a couple. It was great practice for serious talk. Mm. We've never, and I can say this without any doubt, we've never argued about money. We, we've never argued about money, ever. Except that one time when I asked you where these shoes were from and you got mad at me because you thought I was like, just like remember that whole fiasco yeah but that's some that's some generational shit I yeah, have to that was, yeah. okay uh how do you say no to a prenup you just say no you just say no you can just say no no but hold on a second you can say no to a prenup but you have to be prepared that number one you might not end up marrying that person and i just think it would be a really foolish thing to say no to a prenup and having that be the reason why you don't marry this yeah. potentially awesome person 100%. What clause would you add to a prenup? I feel like we should have a lawyer here. It's hard for me to say because you and I haven't had any issues, but I think one of the things you may not want to add it to a prenup, but you may want to have like serious discussions about it, raising children. I've heard of people adding that to prenups in terms of just their philosophies and like the way they want to raise children. I would consider adding that because I think that that might be a reason why people have a lot of disagreements and arguments once they're, once they're married. I don't know. I feel like it depends what's important for you. I think that there's a standard outline of how prenup looks like. So I think that the added clauses are really <clears throat> about what it is that's important to you and what you want to make sure is present there. So I would highly recommend to talk to a lawyer. Explain conditional clauses about cheating causes leading to termination of a marriage. That's interesting. That's a very specific question. That's, well, no, I mean, kind of makes sense. But I guess my question is, if you think that your partner is going to cheat on you before you enter into a marriage with them, you want to put something, I'm just, I'm just processing this. If the other side cheats, then you should get more money. I don't know. I don't think, I don't, I don't think, I think it's irrelevant. I think you need to make a good equitable plan as to what happens if the marriage breaks down. That's fair to both sides. The termination of a marriage can be caused by a lot of different things and infidelity can be one of them, but I just feel like that doesn't cancel what you've built together, what each of you deserve to get. Like it, it's kind of, I just not... feel, I just feel if the marriage breaks down, it breaks down. I think assigning, yeah. assigning blame and saying, well, it broke down because this person cheated, but then I could turn around and say, well, Somebody could say, well, yes, well, I, I cheated was neglected because I was neglected, right? right? So, I, yeah, I wouldn't, I, I don't think it's a good idea to include that. I just think it's irrelevant. I just want to say one last thing, guys. Don't treat this marriage contract like it's this terrible, evil thing. Don't let pop culture tell you that it's a terrible thing. Don't let your emotions overwhelm you into making the wrong decisions in terms of your response. And 
if you're the partner going in with considerably more net worth than, than the person that you're marrying, set realistic expectations. You can't expect to be married to someone, have them give you X your amount time, of their, their, their time, effort. Support. Yeah, like have them be your partner and then think that they're gonna walk away with nothing. It's just, it's unrealistic and it's just, it's like, it's just it's a, offensive. It's just a bad thing to do. You're just not a good human being if you expect someone to give you so much and for them not to get anything in, in return if things don't work out. So be a good person. Mind drop. Is that it? Yes, the 14 burning prenup questions. If there's any specific questions that you feel like we didn't touch on, any subjects you wanna hear more um, about from us, let us know. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. See you guys. Mom and dad go for lunch.